want to determine if the two given functions are inverses of one another. Remember, inverse functions are two functions that undo each other. So to show if two functions are inverses of one another, we have to show that f of g of x is equal to x, and also that g of f of x is equal to x. This is a way of verifying that for every input, the two functions will undo each other. Notice here the initial input into g is x, and the final output of the composite function is also x. The input and the output are the same because the two functions undo each other in this direction. And also for g of f of x, the initial input into f is x, and the final output of the composite function is also x. Again, verifying that the two functions will undo each other because the initial input and the final output are both the same. So for f of g, we'll write f of g of x. And since g of x is the inner function, and g of x is equal to the quantity x plus three divided by seven, we'll have f of the quantity x plus three divided by seven, and this will become the input into function f, where f of x equals seven times x minus three. So this would be equal to seven, and now the input is this fraction, x plus three divided by seven minus three. And now we'll simplify. Notice here we can think of this as seven over one, so these seven simplify to one. So we'd have the quantity x plus three minus three. So this composite function does equal x. So this is good news, but we also have to show that g of f of x is equal to x. So we'll go ahead and write this as g of f of x. Now notice the inner function is f of x, which is equal to seven x minus three. So this is equal to g of seven x minus three. So this becomes the input into function g. So we'll substitute seven x minus three for this x here. So we'll have seven x minus three plus three, all divided by seven. If we simplify the numerator, notice how we have minus three plus three, that's zero. So we have seven x all over seven, which does simplify to x. So g of f of x is also equal to x. Therefore, these two functions are inverses. Let's take a look at a second example now. Here, f of x equals x cubed minus one, and g of x equals the cube root of x plus one. Again, to verify that these are inverse functions, we must show that both of these composite functions are equal to x. So for f of g, we'll write this as f of g of x. Notice how the inner function is g of x, which is equal to the cube root of the quantity x plus one. So we'll have f of the cube root of the quantity x plus one. So all of this becomes the input into function f, where f of x is equal to x cubed minus one. So we're going to cube the input of the cube root of x plus one, and then we'll subtract one. Well, if we cube a cube root, these will undo each other, leaving us with the radicand of x plus one. x plus one minus one is equal to x, so that's good news. The first composite function is equal to x. Now we need to verify that g of f is also equal to x. So we'll write g of f as g of f of x. Now the inner function is f, which is equal to x cubed minus one, so this becomes g of x cubed minus one. So all this becomes the input into function g, where g of x equals the cube root of the quantity x plus one. So we're going to have the cube root, and then instead of x plus one, we'll have x cubed minus one plus one. Well here notice how minus one plus one simplifies to zero. This is just the cube root of x cubed, which would be equal to x. 
And since both composite functions are equal to x, we have verified that these two functions are inverses of one another. So it is important that we show our detailed work here because our work is our verification. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.